This is the locker room where the coaches of Husson University talk sports. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm your host, Cody Provost, and this is The Locker Room, the show that introduces you to the coaches and athletes of Husson University. Our guest this week is Husson's Director of Athletics, Frank Pergolesi. First off, Frank, thanks for coming on the show today. Can you start by telling us a little bit about your background and how you made your way over to Husson? Sure. Um, I have been in college athletics for uh, probably 30 years, um, maybe even more. Started out as a collegiate football coach and worked my way up the ranks and ended up getting my first athletic director job in the late 1980s. And Husson now is my fifth uh, collegiate athletic director position. And you came over here from uh, West Virginia University Institute, Institute of Technology in uh, Montgomery. What brought you up to Husson? Oh, a lot of things. Uh, um, looking for a quality program, and Huston certainly offered that. Uh, my wife and I were very interested in living in Maine. Um, so those two things, and, and, you know, beautiful campus, beautiful community, uh, very successful program, good athletic facilities, all those things together helped me make that decision. And you've been on the job for a little over a year here now at Huston. How are things going so far here with Huston Athletics? I think they're going pretty good. Busy. <laughs> a lot of championships. Yeah, very busy, but they're going well. And uh, Husson had three winning teams this fall, three conference championships, uh, field hockey, men's soccer, and football. As an AD, how do you make sure all these teams stay competitive on a year-to-year -year basis? Uh, I think that the, really the main uh, thing that's in my hands uh, is making sure we have the best coaches that we can get. And then number two, doing everything I can to support those teams in their efforts to be successful. Well, what kind of things do you mean by support those teams? Uh, uh, you know, budgetarily, uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, yeah, an example of supporting the teams would have been, a, would have been putting in a bid to host an NCAA playoff game you know, weeks in advance of actually winning the championship. And that was a that was a big experience. We'll get to that in a yeah, minute. Yeah. Uh, you spoke about also finding the right coach. What kind of things do you look for in a coach? Well, you know, you want to have uh, them have a certain level of experience if you can. Uh, you want to be able to ask them questions and get complete and thorough answers about philosophy or uh, how they would specifically do things. Um, all things being equal, you, if they've been a head coach before, that's better than if they haven't. All things being equal, if they come from a successful program rather than one that maybe has struggled a little bit, that's, that's important. Um, end of the day, though, it's an educated guess, you know, and it's, it's kind of uh, coming to a feeling in your, in your brain, in your head, in your stomach that, you know this person is a good fit for our program and our our university and it was a good fall season uh Huston football they finished eight and two overall they made it to their first ever ncaa playoff game they lost to mit here at home and you spoke about putting a bit mm -hmm. a bit in for them uh, what did you take away from this season and do you feel the football program has put Huston on the map I, you know uh, putting Huston on the map is a is a bigger question than than just football. I mean, I, I think anytime you have an athletic team of that size and scope uh, that does well, that that creates additional uh, positive publicity for the institution, more so in all honesty than probably field hockey did. Uh, although in the field hockey world, in that very specific world, it probably got a lot of attention. In the, in the collegiate and high school football world, our football success, I'm sure, got a lot of attention. Uh, football happens to kind of transcend that and, and get outside of the sport specific worlds into uh, you know the greater PR at, at large and probably didn't hurt that we were playing MIT and that that story generated a significant amount of of media attention uh, which I think was good for Husson. And a portion of the success that the football team has had can probably be uh, attributed to Gabby Price the coach. Uh, can you speak uh, about him as a coach and as a person? I think more than just a little. 
of the success. I mean, uh, you know, Gabby has in, in just two years completely turned around that football program um, you know, to the point where we have not only very talented and capable football players, but they're also uh, outstanding young men uh, who are a pleasure to be around. And, and uh, I think we'll find at the end of the semester work very hard in the classroom to be successful. So, uh, uh, I, you know, all of that goes back to Gabby uh, because Gabby picks the assistant coaches and the assistant coaches certainly, um, you know, put put his philosophy and his approach in, into action across 117 young men. Uh, but it's it's well more than a little bit. And Coach Price has been here for a couple of years since coming back. You've been here for a year. Uh, can you speak about you guys' maybe personal or professional relationship? How, how well do you know him now that you've been here for a year? Well, I, you know, I was here for a good part of last year, last football season as well, so I kind of feel like we've been through two seasons together. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a football coach by trade, so I, I probably know enough just to be dangerous. Uh, but I, I feel like Gabby and I get along very well and, and you know, that we're... Uh, we're doing our best to make decisions that will positively impact our program and enable us to continue to be successful. And Coach Price has really gotten his players to buy into his system. He's been a great recruiter. Um, you were a former football coach, you've told us. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about how this may have went about, how he got his team to buy into the system so it seems easily in two years they've turned this whole thing around? You know, I think, I think more than anything else, he recruits quality young men. Um, and when they get here, he, they, they really, he really shows them that he cares about them. And uh, I think the kids respond to that. And I, I'm, matter of fact, I don't think I know they, they respond to that because I've seen it uh, close up and in action. They graduate 19 seniors this year, mm -hmm. so can it be realistic to expect the same thing they did this year next year? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, 19 seniors is, a, is an exciting number in itself. Uh, in, in Division three football, uh, it's not the. Uh, it's not unusual for s students who are not going to play to kind of retire from from the sport. Um, so to get to to have 19 seniors is an, indic an indication of of the kind of the quality experience that you're providing to to those young men. Um, I you know I don't know all the stuff off the top of my head in terms of returners, but I'm. I believe we've got a good number of returning starters on both offense and defense who were not seniors. So, uh, you know, I would ex I would expect that we're going to hit the ground running, um, and I would expect that we're going to recruit another talented group of players and um, be ready to go from day one. Sh should be a pretty fun season to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Fun to follow Husker you know, when, football. When you win a championship once, and then people say, "What's next? What's next?" is to do it again. That's the perception around yeah, the state that's the what's next and then you know whether it's high school football or high school sports or college sports or professional sports you know the the, the, the consistency of, of of doing it cons over a period of time on a consecutive basis or, or on a frequent basis is i think that's that's the next level for our program is is to do it again to win in the playoffs you know, to show that it wasn't just a one time well just to you know, let's start with winning the ECF, ECFC championship again because that's not an easy right. task. And if we do that, then then you know the playoffs is a is a different challenge uh, at a different time. Another team that had success this fall was the field hockey team. They won their first NAC title in I believe three years uh, with a first year coach, Madeline Hopner. Um, can you talk about what she and the team does well to, you know, that got them this championship? I'm not sure I know enough about field hockey to, to get into a high level of intricacy, but uh, uh, it's clear from the stats that they play great defense. You know, just look at how many goals they gave up, particularly in conference play. Uh, they play great defense um, and and play together as a team. I, I, I think those are the two observations that I would make. Uh, I haven't watched them play a little bit. And this is a young team, so maybe you, you might not know the X's and O's perspectives, but uh, as a young team and a young coach, what, how does that make you feel, or, or what things can you, uh, can you figure out from this team by winning that conference with such a young team and young coach? 
Um, you know, I, I think much like football, you know, the, the, the mark of being consistent now is the next uh, challenge. And, and certainly the, the success that we had in field hockey will help us in recruiting. Um, us in field hockey draws a lot of interest in the field hockey world uh, regardless, and, and I think this will only make it better. And, you know, we, uh, and, uh, but Coach Hopner didn't really, didn't start till July 1, so her ability to recruit was, I don't, th I don't know that she had any ability to recruit at that point in time in the summer. So, you know, the fact that she took uh, somebody else's team and, and, and it achieved more uh, and, and without having any opportunity to, to attract her own team, I think is a sign of good things to come. And Hustle, they the field hockey team, they lose two seniors and defensive players of the year, Annika Durell and Melissa Souza. Yeah, now those are two pretty good players. <laughs> pretty good players. Yeah. Can you ex tell us uh, good students too? Oh, yeah, no question. You don't have to worry about the, any of those players being ac ac academics. But uh, uh, Melissa Souza was uh, North Atlanta Conference Defensive Player of the Year, and Annika Durell was first team all conference defense. So, um, Two good players. And I was reading up on you before uh, today, a little bit of, when you were hired, a lot of talk about your view of a student athlete. Can you explain what that means, your view of a student athlete? Um, well, I think uh, students who are athletes rather than athletes who are students, if I remember what I said correctly. <laughs> I always want to remember what you said 12 months ago, so you say the same thing. Right. right. Um, but, you know, our... Uh, you know, we're going to be hiring two coaches probably in the next two weeks. And, and you know, I, undoubtedly during the interview process, they're all going to ask, all the candidates are going to ask what the expectations are. And, um, I, you know, my, my expectations are, are very simple, and I, I expect us to be the best. I expect us to be the best athletically. I expect us to be the best academically. I expect us to be the best in the way our athletes conduct themselves on campus and, and in the community. Um, because I, I think that's Hudson has a right and uh, to expect that kind of performance and, and that goes that level of accomplishment. And how would you compare Hudson to say you've been at five other schools or four other schools? Mm -hmm. um, how would you compare Hudson to those schools? Uh, you know, every school is different. Every campus has its own character and its own culture. And, and uh, uh, I've had the good fortune to uh, be at both the Division One level and the, and the NAIA level and the Division Three level, so those those things are different. The, the, the finances are definitely different, and the finances drive uh, a lot. The finances influence the kind of program you're going to have uh, in almost every situation. Um, Huston's a great place, you know, and that doesn't mean that I wasn't at other places that that were positive and enjoyable, but this is a very good place. After this short break, we will continue to talk Husson Athletics when we discuss men's soccer and some noon teams coming to campus. Stay tuned. Good. Nice. Com commercial now. Huh? Great. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. Could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. 
buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the locker room. I'm your host, Cody Provost. We're pleased to be joined by Athletic Director Frank Pergolesi. And Frank, let's get right into it here. All right, Cody. Jeff Gettler and the men's soccer team had really high hopes coming into the season. Um, they went 13-8 and overall, and they captured another NAC title. Uh, what do you feel led to their success after kind of struggling last season? Uh, again, soccer is not my area of expertise, so um, my analysis is uh, at a very rudimentary level. Um, I, I, I think we, uh, number one, the team got hot at the right time. Um, you know, got hot going into the tournament. A uh, number of very skilled players. Um, and they just did an outstanding job. Um, Bill Frost, um, Steve Berenyi, Young man who was doing things with a soccer ball that I, I could only imagine doing. Can you talk a little bit about Jeff and how he's still able to get the best out of his team even when uh, times aren't looking so promising? Yeah, no question. I mean, Jeff is an experienced and, and, and veteran coach who, uh, you know, um, has been through lots and lots and lots of competitions. And, and we were very excited for him this year that he was able to record his 300th. Uh, win in the uh, NAC championship game, so, and that's a pretty good feat. How do you uh, no question. do you recognize something like that as an AD? Uh, well, we had a little cake in the office, and and everybody came by and had a piece of cake and congratulated them. Yeah, nothing too fancy or too formal, but so 500 wins. What do you? How do you recognize that? <laughs> 500 <laughs> wins. We, watch? 500 wins. We probably would need to have a dinner or something. I know Kissy Walker had 400 last year, and and uh, we got a, did a cake for that as well. Okay. Cake's a common theme Cake's here. Cake's the thing, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, the, like, we like cake in the athletic department. Any any flavor preference? Uh, marble. Marble. You know, with the uh, whipped cream frosting. Yeah, yep. best cream. <laughs> yeah. Um, the soccer team, they beat Thomas College. Uh, they beat him in a dominating fashion, and Thomas College... Really was, did, yeah. It was that... Are you always... I know you're rooting for Hassan as the AD, but... Sometimes can some of these victories surprise you or? Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes you're surprised at how uh, easy or difficult a, a game is or isn't, you know, because you always have you always have expectations about uh, this is going to be a hard game or this is not going to be a hard game or, um, and Thomas in particular, we played them during the regular season, uh, fell behind early, uh, and if I remember Correctly, came on very strong in the second half to win, um, and then the, in the championship game scored early. They scored, and then we just went on a barrage. and And I don't think anybody expected that the margin of victory. I I think the team was very confident. I you know, I certainly was confident and, and had high expectations. I'm sure the coaching staff did as well. I'm not sure any of them expected. To win uh, by such that landslide of an amount, you know. But that's how games are. Uh, that's why you play them to see, to see what the outcome is. Well, let's stay on the field here, but we'll go to the women's soccer team. They finished 12 and 8 in the regular mm -hmm. season, and they ended up losing in the second round to Castleton. I know you don't know the X's and O's about soccer, but how do you feel their season went? Oh, well, I mean, 12 and 8 is a is a big step forward from where they had been. Uh, uh, the last two years, so there's no question that that program moved forward. Uh, it was clear to me that uh, particularly this year's group of freshmen um, had a level of athletic ability and skill that um, as a group was higher than maybe previous recruiting classes. Um, you know, so th that's that's always important uh, because if you don't get better, you get worse. You, know, there's, you don't stand still. Um, and I think they played very well. They, they too, like the field hockey team, played very good defense, um, which kept them in most every game they were, they played. And it seems like you've you've been to a lot of games. As an athletic director, how much of a responsibility it is, is it for you to go see in as many games as possible from all the teams? Well, I try to go to all of them. You know, I try to go, uh, I'm talking about home games, of course. Um, 
Well, there's always a game going on. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I couldn't imagine sitting at home in my house at, on a Wednesday night when there's a home volleyball match or a home soccer match on campus. I think that's part of what I'm supposed to do is to be there to support the students. Um, plus, you know, that all, all the off-the-field work that we do, whether it's establishing who's eligible and who isn't or raising money or planning a facility – all of all, at the end of the day, all of that is about helping the students on our teams be successful. Uh, so if you're doing all that, I, I I personally can't comprehend why you wouldn't be at their competitions because that's when the that's their recitals, that's their performances where they're putting their hard work and their their lessons to you know into play. So is there any time of the year when you have a downtime? Well, you know, the summer is 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 definitely down because uh, even though we're t we're typically putting in full days in the office, there's no there's no competition, so there's nothing at night and there's nothing on the weekends. Uh, this time of the year is not too bad. Um, you know, the, the fall is crazy because the fall we have eight I think eight teams competing during the fall, so it's just Haywire. nonstop. You know. If you have a weekend where nobody is at home, that's that's very unusual. Yeah. Um, basketball, you know, we'll play basketball this weekend, and then we won't have home games for another month. So, uh, you know, that slows down dramatically. And then the spring kicks back up in pretty, because you got at least four teams going on, and and you got weather that you're going to be dealing with, and then you got baseball and softball who are always playing double headers. So a, a baseball game is not a baseball game; mm -hmm. it's two baseball games. Right. Um, I want to touch on kind of an unusual situation here. Kate Goopy, she coaches five different teams. How tough is it to be a coach of five teams and still get a winning product? Uh, well, I don't think we have five yet. It'd be four right now, five okay. next year. But yeah, um, coming up. Uh, you know, track uh, and uh, it, that's not an unusual assignment in athletics. The the, the track cross country programs okay. are typically under one coaching staff not always but but i think more often than not and how many assistants will she have oh she's got one two uh, well right now she has four and she'll have another uh next year so uh you know when they get to track uh tracks a, a, a little bit like football and that the, the throwers work with this coach and the sprinters work with this coach and the distance people work with this coach. So Kate works with the distance people mm -hmm. uh, and then their, their assistant coach is working with the other groups. So, and then she obviously is in charge of the whole operation. So, Now, how tough is it to have these teams without a track and are there any plans in the future to get a track or a field house? Uh, it, it certainly is not ideal. Uh, I think we've mitigated that to some extent in that we've committed uh, budgetary dollars for the team to go up to the field house at the University of Maine uh, on average two times a week. So we know that two times a week the students uh, have an opportunity to, to really get a solid workout in, in, in their event or their uh, whatever, they're, they, uh, whatever they compete in. Um, so uh, a, a track, uh, you know, the, the, the university has uh, we have plans for a, a field house, which would include an indoor track. Um, that that project is much like any other building on campus, is donor driven, uh, and that you know finding and identifying a, a donor who can uh, uh, commit the resources uh, to, to construct <laughs> that facility. Um, could be Alphon. It could be a lot of things. He's got a few few around the state. Uh, so, you know, if, if a donor were identified who wanted to do that particular project, then that project would rise to the top of the list. Uh, let's talk about golf, <laughs> one of my favorite sports. Mm -hmm. um, the golf team has won 10 NAC titles since 2003. They finished second this year. With all the success they've had, is, is that part of a reason why they added a women's, you guys are adding a women's team? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Uh, you know, as as we once we made the decision that we wanted to grow, uh, 
you know, we really focused in, or I focused in on sports that wouldn't uh, put additional burden on our on-campus facilities. Uh, so that's how you get a golf and a tennis. And, and um, uh, there's not a lot of female women's collegiate golf in, in Maine. There's not a lot in New England. Uh, so we felt there was an opportunity there to, uh, you know, to beat other people to the punch and, and to get a program. We had a, uh, uh, the, our new coach was very interested in, in doing that as well. So all those things kind of combined. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think uh, we think golf uh, is a sport that uh, will attract uh, female athletes who are also good students. And I mentioned it briefly before. I want to talk about it again. As an ED, how do you get the teams that have won these conference titles to start winning maybe some NCAA, like perhaps football this year? What, what's the next step in these programs to get them to get the victory in the playoffs? Uh, well, uh, I think in a lot of ways you got to be lucky. You've know, you got to get the right matchups uh, at the right time. Um, uh, and, and, and so part of the way in which you get the right matchups uh, is, is, is having a good schedule. You know, strength of schedule is important, and then you got to win the games. Um, uh, putting in bids to get home games, that's, that helps. You know, the big difference between playing at home and playing on the road. Um, and, and, and just continuing to, to put coaches in a position to recruit that caliber of athlete. Great. Thank you, Frank, for coming in today. When we come back, we will recap the Athletes of the Week, so don't go anywhere. Average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. Could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to the locker room. I'm your host, Cody Provost. Before the break, we were pleased to be joined by Athletic Director Frank Pergolese. We will now turn our attention to the Athletes of the Week. We want to congratulate this week's Athletes of the Week, Kelly Cashin of the Indoor Track Team, and Tim Smith of Men's Swimming and Diving. Congratulations to both of them, and good luck to all the teams competing this weekend. That's all the time we have for this episode of The Locker Room. We'd like to thank our guest, Frank Pergolese, for coming on the show today. You can follow The Locker Room on Twitter at LockerRoom underscore TV. If you would like to watch any episode again, go to Nescom Journalism on YouTube. Be sure to join us next semester for all new editions of The Locker Room. For all the people working hard behind the scenes, I'm Cody Provost. Thanks for watching.